Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the browser, a really essential workflow tool in my opinion. Uh, not only to find stuff, but also to find it fast. And in my special case at least, also sometimes finding stuff I did not remember having in the first place. But I didn't say that too loud. So, um, yeah, you can open the browser by clicking here in this uh, device bar. And because it's an instrument channel, it already defaults to instruments. But I customized it a little bit, and that's, of course, the first question. What is a good configuration? As you might know, when we right-click, we can uh, say this. Use current selections for this context, and the context is empty instrument track in this case. Um, I cannot tell you what works for you, but what works for me is I first went to file kind, and what I want to see is devices from Bitwig in this case, and I want to see plugins. So I want to highlight both of them. I can do that by holding shift before clicking. And now I see devices and from Bitwig, and I see instruments from the plugin folder. And only instruments and no effects because uh, this button here is selected. And now the list is already kind of considerably shorter than, you know, when everything is selected, it's a gazillion miles long, and even string searches are less likely to deliver valuable results because there's just so many strings that potentially match your search criteria. So yeah, file kind, devices, and plugins, and now we have a reasonably short list. And then I save this as my default for empty instrument track. Now, from here on, I mean, this already solved like 90% of my problems, at least. So when I open the browser, as you might know, the, the search bar is immediately active. Uh, so you can immediately start, start typing. And I, I always, or 90, yeah, in 90% or more of the cases, I just start typing. Uh, for example, I want a grid, which is something I use very often. And then after three letter is letters, it already proposes the polygrid in the first position. Right? And so, well, I could now select this with the mouse, but I'm, I'm already on the keyboard with my hands, so I don't want to uh, go back and forth between mouse and keyboard. So, and if I just want to instantiate the grid, I would just press enter, which brings me into uh, the results. And since it's the first item in this list, I can just press enter again. And now I have an instance of the polygrid. And, you know, if you get used to it, for example, yeah, hit the letter B on the keyboard. In my case, I don't know if it's that's default key command. Browser opens, three, enter, enter, and I have my grid. So if, yeah, if you start using the browser like this and this becomes muscle memory, you become really, really fast. And just a few other examples. Um, Serum just needs three letters, enter, enter. Um, vital, three letter. Oh, yeah, that's the... Um, clap plugin version, which is sometimes a little bit buggy. And yeah, an Omnisphere, whatever, you know, it works. For, so 99% of the cases, I'm happy with this configuration and I'm all set. But yeah, let's look at some more options in the effects browser because there are a lot of, a lot more plugins usually. So let me instantiate the grid here. And so when I now double click here, uh, a different browser opens, or the same browser with a different configuration, because when we look here, we can see that the context is now inserting audio effects. And I have a, a similar configuration here, but in this case, audio effects are selected. In the file kind tab, also uh, devices and plugins, and yeah, 1001, what? kind of what a romantic number of plugins but it's actually not true or yes it is true but these are a lot of plugins are there twice or even three time because there's a vst2 version there's a vst3 version there's a mono version and a stereo version 
But yeah, I I do have a lot of plugins. And that's why I sometimes forget about them. So this is my default configuration. And here, I mean, in the instruments, as you might have seen, I, I set the tab to vendor because I think in that context is the most useful. And also, yeah, when you when you hear with any file kind, you don't get the vendor tab, which I found really annoying when they introduced the new browser. But as soon as you select some devices and plugins, or either or or both, you get the vendor tab back. And I, I think this is really useful, at least in the instrument section. The audio effect section, I actually prefer to have the categories visible. Well, best would be both, like in the old browser, but we have to go for something here. So, yeah, when I open the browser, I have the categories open. So I can see, oh, yeah, I want a distortion, and then go back to the browser, and just searching for a saturator, hitting enter, and it's instantiated. But even better, instead of uh, using the mouse, I can just start typing. After the grid, usually first, I want probably an equalizer. So yeah, and ninety nine percent of the cases, I want the EQ plus anyway, not because it's the best, but because it's the most convenient. And these day, I give a lot about workflow, and I would resort to other equalizers only if I want to do something special, or boost certain frequency, and I know that. A certain equalizer is particularly good in that, but usually EQ Plus does the job for me. But you also see that it already uh, suggests to set the category to equalizer, which in this case I want. So I hit tab, and now I'm in the equalizer category. My previous filters, they still they're still set, and now I can further drill down into my plugins. And yeah, as I mentioned before, sometimes I forget about the plugin, or I do remember that there is a certain equalizer from Softube that I really like, but it has some sort of cryptic name, like, I don't know, EQ45, or whatever, you know, let's go to Softube. And after three letters, it already suggests setting the vendor to Softube. And it's also good in this string prediction because we have narrowed all the search criteria down. That's one of the advantages of doing that. So set the vendor to Softube, yes. So just tab. And now you can see we have search criteria in all of these three lanes. And now I can yeah, use my mouse or the, the keyboard arrows. And ah, yeah, it's the Summit Audio EQF100. Hit enter, and here we go. But yeah, maybe maybe that wasn't the thing. What's also cool is kind of like yeah. First, I can set the category to EQ, and then so searching for soft tube, set vendor to soft tube, and then I realize oh no, equalizer is not from soft tube. Uh, maybe it was from Melda Production. After three letters, it already suggested. And another advantage is, as soon as you confirm the selection with tab or the suggestion, it empties the search field so you can then further use the text input to narrow down your, your searches. And, well, maybe, okay, I don't want an equalizer after all, just a hypothetical example. Um, I want to go to distortions. And so I start typing again, set the category to distortion, hit tab. And now all the other filters remain. I'm still in Melda production, but I see now distortions instead of equalizer. And now I'm like, yeah, well, Softube maybe has a better distortion or when I... So I can just go here and select it and hit enter. And once you, I, I promise you, once you get used to use your browser in this way, you become really, really, really fast. Now let's look at this quick access bar over here. Uh, we have a few things that are predefined by Bitwig, which is everything. Well, if I want to delete my selection, my default pre-selection, I just have to click on it twice 
and it resets it and now really everything is in here. All of my plugins, all of my presets, all of my samples, wavetables, uh, you name it. Then, well, the second entry is all instruments, including presets. Yeah, including presets. Then all effects devices, all MIDI devices, all plugins, which is what we have selected here as well in our default selection, or in my default selection. Then the user library, which contains all of my personal presets, uh, samples, and you name it. Then we have all the samples here. And then you can have your own collections, which I really encourage you to do. For example, I have my wavetable sense in a collection for, for quick access and uh, some kick design tools and presets. Then um, also my granular effects, because I'm a huge fan of granular uh, effect devices. And also kind of some, some workflow tips here. These quick sources, access sources, are mapped to your function keys. So if I want to see everything, I just hit F1. And if I want the default selections to go away, I hit F1 again. Now everything is resetted. And I also know in my case, yeah, but you can rearrange this. In my case, the plugins are under F5. So I hit F5, start typing, and I already get the search prediction. I, I want, and also, yeah, here important, like F8 brings me to my wavetable synth, and then I can scroll through them and, uh, yeah, select one of them. Yeah, and that makes you really, really fast. Imagine, you know, you want to serum, open it up, F8. Enter. Done. Uh, also, if you want to navigate, you can just hit the left arrow key, which uh, moves the focus from the search field to whatever uh, tab is, is active, and then you can just uh, navigate with the arrow keys, hit Enter to select something. You can switch between the tabs by uh, hitting the first letter of the tab name on your keyboard. So, for example, L brings me to the Location tab, uh, C brings me to the Category tab, F brings me back to the to the files. So, that's also something that can be really helpful in navigating. If I want to go back to the search field, I hit S, and as you can see, the carrot is now blinking again. Now, finally, most of the um, instruments, at least Bitic instruments, have presets. So, for example, I want to instantiate the drum machine, and I want to get over to the presets. Well, there's this little arrow here that I could press that brings me to the presets. But uh, I, as you might guess, I prefer key commands, and I assigned Control Option Command P to preset. I would have preferred only P, but that's already assigned to show plugin or the detail view of the VST. And for some reason, I cannot reassign it, not overload it, even though in this context, it might make sense. And now I'm uh, in, in the presets. And now, yeah, maybe I want to uh, only see my user presets. So I hit F6 because that's my library. So now I have the drum machine and uh, only my personal presets are displayed, which makes navigating a lot faster. Now, yeah, let's see what we have, whatever. Add an equalizer, a delay, and then of course, yeah, make default presets and save them by, you know, save as default preset. Yeah, as you can see, the browser is your friend. And same is, of course, true for the audio file browser, where you might have a different default selection here. Well, I am I want the location tab open and I want my sample lips, short for sample libraries, open so that I can 
quickly navigate through this this tree. I have my own quick access locations here. Yeah, this is how the browser works, and you can configure it for instruments, for audio effects, for audio files, for sample search, for wavetable searching, MIDI effects. You can have your defaults for everything, and I suggest start using your keyboard if you do not already. Save the right default, use your keyboard, and use key commands, and you will become a browser wizard in no time. And really, I, at first, it, it looks a bit overwhelming, but... It took me about a week or so to get used to it, and now I would not want to use the browser in any other way. I hope you learned something and you found the video useful, even though it was a little bit dry. Yeah, then like, comment, subscribe, and I see you next time.